Good morning. <clears throat> we are um, on our third day of uh, morning manna, and I'm introducing or bringing in the uh, Periscope audience. Um, they have started, and we will um, come in with the uh, prayer group that we're meeting with out of uh, Louisiana, and we will join them already in session. And I want to thank you for um, tuning in, whether in replay or in live uh, this morning. And we will continue to do this this week and uh, the Lord willing in future weeks as well. All right, we will join the other, um, I believe, already in progress. Keeping us safe last night, 
And uh, I thank him for uh, answered prayers yesterday uh, with my granddaughter, uh, promoted her to the next grade because she really struggled, struggled with math. I pray for all spoken as well as unspoken prayers for all of our children. I ask God to continue watching and protecting over all of our children, grandchildren, all those going to work, uh, all those in the medical profession, uh, the uh, paramedics and uh, doctors and nurses, uh, all those who are, are seeking him, uh, that they continue to, to seek him and walk with him and trust in him and for all of us. And I thank God for the prayer line um, and I pray for the speaker uh, this morning and I thank God for all of the message, messages, uh, speakers, and studies that we've been having because they're uh, a blessing. They're just truly a blessing. And uh, I ask him to continue uh, working with all of us. And I'm asking for prayer now for the students because some of them are going to have virtual learning for the summer. Uh, those who are going back to work, that God continue to surround them with his head to protect your life safety and I hope the guardian angels and just keep them all safe. And great all of them, uh, safe travel and grace and mercy. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask. Amen. 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 I have someone else. Someone else before we uh, go into inclusion and prayer. Good morning. I'd like um, special prayer for missing members, my son Kyrie, and all of the other prayer requests that have come up before me. <laughs> Amen. One other more. Uh, someone else? Someone yes, I'd like special prayer for all of our Facebook friends. The, um, the Faith Church has about 40, I'll just the score one, about 4,500 Facebook friends. And I'd like uh, that the Lord would just allow them to visit our page and to see the messages, to see the, the, the different um opportunities for prayer and, and join in and call in and view the things that are being posted uh, because Jesus said if he be lifted up he'll draw all men into himself so I'm just asking that people visit our page and, and see the messages and, and it would spark uh, especially in them to draw them closer to the Lord especially for those that don't have a relationship with him that don't know him uh, it says for those people who do have a relationship that they would grow in their relationship with Jesus. And I want to ask everyone to remember the family of Ahmad Aubrey and George uh, Floyd. Let's super remember that. And let's pray for Minneapolis. Uh, mm -hmm. They, uh, last night, uh, y yesterday evening, um, the police, <laughs> they, 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 there was a uh, demonstration. I mean, the people really done demonstrated and showed and protested against what, what took place. So we're going to remember uh, them in prayer and ask God to hold back the one to strike. Anyone else uh, before uh, we pray? Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. I want to lift up and prayer all of our churches all, all of them even the not for the first the seventh day administrators that they prepared to open back up that mm -hmm. uh, people would be mindful of how to take care of their health so it's not to affect anybody and to restart anything we're asking that the Lord would also uh, help us to be compassionate toward uh, one another, uh, just in case someone does get ill. But if we are doing the things that we know to do, uh, you know, taking care of our health. Some people have been taking uh, zinc to combat COVID just to keep them so well, uh, wearing masks if you're sick at home. If you have um, health issues and you know that anybody else being ill could cause you to get ill. So I'm just praying that everyone is careful and uh, the Lord will hold back the disease in our people 
we want to worship face to face. Thank you. Amen. Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 
Father in heaven, as we enter into your presence this morning, into your sanctuary, we see you, O oh Father, sitting on the throne. We see Jesus sitting on the right, right side of you. He's our lawyer. He's our advocate. He's pleading for mercy for us all. We need mercy today, O oh Father. Yes, I ask, Lord, that you would dry up this virus. All you have to do is speak. Lord, this virus is messing up a lot of people's lives. We know Satan meant it for evil, but so much good is coming out of this. So, Lord, our children need to get back to school. Oh. They need school, Father. Oh. A lot of parents have to go to work. They can't afford to uh, teach their children. So, Lord, please have mercy upon us. Your word said we have not because we don't ask, and that we let go of your arm too soon. But, Lord, we are pleading for mercy this morning. I lift up the petition that the pastor called the names of children, the ones who have asthma, and got to get out there. They're more, uh, they, they, they can get that virus a little quicker because of the, the health problems. So, Lord, I lift them up. I ask that you please the blood of Jesus around those them. I lift up all unspoken requests. I lift up those who are grieving over the loss of their long, loved ones. He said, bless them, they that moan, for they shall be comfort. Lord, comfort your people. I pray for our teenagers, our children, those who have left the fold. They were taught, Lord. They were taught, but they left. So, Lord, bring them back into the fold. I pray, Lord, for those unsaved children, the, 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 the grandmothers who have been praying. Uh, uh, they want their children to come back. They, they love their children, their grandchildren. So bring them back, Lord. I pray for those that's inside the fold. We know that we have to pray for all, everything. We can't leave nothing undone. Because those that's in the fold, we don't be careful. When the shaking time comes, all that can be shaken will be shaken, and they'll get shaked out. So, Lord, while we praying for those out there, we praying for you to keep those that's inside the fold that's been coming week by week that love you. Don't let the enemy shake them out. I live for those that who are in prison, Lord. If they don't take this, catch this virus. I'm in San Antonio. There's a lot of guys in prison that get this virus. Lord, please protect our children that's in prison and that you uh, keep them from not getting this virus. Lord, I lift up my son, Walter, Lord. I ask that you be with him. I pray that you fill him with your Holy Spirit. I pray that you touch his mouth. And Lord, if I have done anything, I said anything, I prohibit this prayer and cause this prayer to not be heard, Lord. We ask that you forgive each one of us on this prayer line. Open up our heart, Lord, that we'll receive your blessing that you have for us. We love you and we praise you. Amen. 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 All right. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. All right. It is a pleasure to uh, meet again with you and also... Um, Good morning to the Forest Hill and the Periscope family, as well as now the YouTube family, those who will be uh, viewing this uh, at a later time this morning. I want to thank you all. Um, it, um, it's a beautiful thing to have a praying mother. I just want to let those who are mothers and grandmothers and you're praying on behalf of your children it's a beautiful thing to hear your, your parents uh, pray for you. I tried to make sure that um, my son hears um, my wife and myself pray for him and to let him know that um, he has parents that are praying for him and on his behalf as well. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. Father, I come before you touching in the green with those who have already prayed and those who are petitioning, those who are on this line, who are on uh, the various platforms that will hear this message today, Lord. But Father, I just have to say that I thank you for Pastor Joe. My friend, Pastor Footman is one who, he heard the call to do this and he was obedient. But Lord, before that, I was obedient and preparing for it because I didn't even know that he was gonna ask me and invite me to be part of this. But I thank you 
uh, because, Lord, it's important that we are obedient to your word because we never know why you tell us to do it until it's time for us to do it, Lord, but it is important that we obey. And, Father, I pray that you strengthen me. You know the uh, challenges that the adversary have set forth. Um, they're unspoken, but they are challenging nonetheless. I pray that you strengthen me to overcome, that you gain the glory. Because as I speak these words about being filled with the Holy Spirit, you say in your word that it's like a two-edged sword. Not only does it cut those who listen, but it also cuts the one who is speaking it. I pray, Lord, that as the adversary sends these and, 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 and is, is wrestling with me, I, I let go and let you fight the battle. And I thank you that you will fight the battle for this. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We'll begin as we continue with the walking in the Spirit and the Spirit baptism in preparation for the second coming. Today we will focus on two. Um, I'll spend a little time in both persevering prayer and intercessory prayer. Um, there's already examples on the prayer line of this, but I want to share a few things that the Lord has placed upon my heart. Our, our memory text for this week is Galatians 5 and 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. In our microwave, microprocessing, microchipped, 5G speed, streaming it now, downloaded instantly, I need it yesterday kind of world, patience is not an option. We don't want to wait for anything. We don't want to uh, wait at a light. We don't want to wait for instant popcorn, instant rice, instant grits, you name it. We want it yesterday. That is the society and the world that we live in. And unfortunately, many times this quick fix attitude finds its way into our prayer life. Often we pray for something occasionally, but not perseveringly. We don't stick with it. It's not that we don't mean to, but we think because things have been made convenient, they've been made easy, that when we pray, it should just be that same way. We come into the Lord's presence presumptuously that we should receive Yet we have not asked the Lord, what must we do to be prepared to receive? The truth is that persevering prayer is not an option. It is a necessity, just as united prayer is a necessity. If we are to be victorious over our adversary personally and corporately as a church, we must persevere in prayer. Jesus was personally acquainted with the necessity for persevering prayer. Many times he spent entire nights in prayer. Entire nights. When we sleep, you think about it, how much time you sleep. I know some of us sleep short time, some of us sleep long. We get a good night's rest. But have we ever thought about praying all night? There are some things that are in our lives, things that are on our minds that need this type of prayer. So as we come to the end of this earth's history and Christ's second coming, we will have to get acquainted with praying more than a few minutes. Um, if we have to, because our knees are sore, lay out prostrate on the ground, we're going to have to pray a lot longer than our knees are able to endure. You have your Bibles? You turn with me to Luke 18 and verse 1. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. 
And in that same chapter, Luke 18 and verse 7, Luke 18 and verse 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? The prophet of the church, you do believe that she was a prophet, amen? Ellen White sensed the spiritual weakness among God's people in her day. She asked her angel why this was the case. I asked the angel why there was no faith and power in Israel. He said, ye let go of the arm of the Lord too soon. Press your petitions to the throne and hold on by strong faith. Believe ye receive the things ye ask for, and ye shall have them. She was then pointing to Elijah. He was subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. His, his faith endured the trial. Seven times he prayed before the Lord, and at last the cloud was seen. We find that in the book Early Writings, page 73. Early Writings, page 73. Unyielding faith. The greatest victories to the Church of Christ or to the individual Christian are not those that are gained by talent or education, by wealth or the favor of men. They are those victories that are gained in the audience chamber with God. When earnest, agonizing faith lays hold upon the mighty arm of power. In 1 Timothy 2, looking at verses 1 through 3, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and we're looking at verses 1 through 3. I exhort, therefore, that first all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. The Hebrew word translated intercession. Intercession is, uh, the Hebrew word translated intercession is Paga, I'm going to spell it out, P-A-G-H-A. -H -A. So the Hebrew word for intercession, to intercede, which means to meet, to push against, to attack, to urge a request, to make peace. I'll read that again. The Hebrew word translated intercession is P-A-G-H-A, -H -A, Paga which means to meet, to push against, to attack, to urge a request, to make peace. When Paga happened at the cross, mercy met God's wrath. Righteousness met sin, love met hate, and life met death. On the cross, Christ, Christ made it possible for the sinner to make peace with God, and the greatest attack against Satan's kingdom took place. You see, when you look at the description of the word paga, and it's to meet, you see how type meant anti-type. You see how there was a push or attack against. The attack was against Satan's kingdom and his rule or his destruction of mankind. We know that it was broken at the cross. So we see how in this one word, all these things are, are done on the behalf of the interceding. That is when Christ interceded on our behalf. And the attack is against Satan. Um, we see what met. In Colossians chapter 1 and 9, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's Colossians 1 verse 9. 
When Jesus told Peter that Satan aimed to become completely victorious over him, realizing Satan's plan, Jesus told Peter that he had prayed for him, that his faith fail not. That's Luke 22, verses 31 through 32. This is an example of intercessory prayer aimed at breaking the power of Satan in the life of the one being prayed for. In James chapter 5 and verse 16, James chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? It availeth much. There are three groups of people we need to intercede for. Fellow believers, number one. Number two, Christians of other faiths, that they come to accept the three angels' message. And the third group is those that have never accepted Christ. In the book by Roger Minot, uh, the book is called A Trip into the Supernatural. He also has several um, books on prayer. Uh, incredible Answers to Prayer and More Incredible Answers of Prayer. And I believe The Power of Prayer is one of his books. He has like three or four of them on prayer. But in his book, uh, Trip, Trip in the Supernatural, where he gave his testimony, he said the spirits would encourage people to listen to their feelings instead of the word of Christ and his prophets. No sure way could the spirits obtain control of people's lives without the individuals realizing what has happened. I added this because of many times we get lost in our feelings, how we feel, what we're thinking. And when we focus on that and not on the word of God, then Satan can come in and he can slip in like a thief. And this is how he keeps us from persevering prayer, where we continue to pray for something. This is how he keeps us from interceding on the behalf because we didn't see it happen right away. We didn't see it happen yesterday. So we, we lose a little faith or we, we pray a little less. That's when we need to pray more. We're not to get into our feelings. And if we find ourselves in that, we need to, to turn this over to the Lord. Because it is possible. Um, when we interact with one another, um, if you've ever been driving and somebody cuts you off, it's easy to get in your feelings. When you're on social media and you're sharing uh, even the word of God, people will say something to you that'll make you get in your feelings. But we know that, uh, we see that, that's what Satan wants. He wants this to distract us from the purpose of praying. Because when you pray for someone else and you pray that the, that the power of Satan is broken in their life, then he knows he loses. So he has to discourage you as a prayer warrior he has to discourage you as one interceding and, and lifting that person up to discourage you and stop you from praying because he can see what you can't see. He can see the person turning away from that sin, from, from leaving those things that you're praying for. You may not see the subtle changes, but Satan knows, and so he has to find out who's praying and get them to stop. Lord, have mercy. And the Lord said, and then we find this, we turn to Luke chapter 22, and we're looking at verses 31 and 32. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. My, my, my we are to intercede on behalf of others and we are to do it perseveringly. We are to lift them up. Persevering prayer is just like breathing. You didn't wake up this morning, took one breath and said, I'm good for the day, did you? God forbid. You taking breaths right now, whether you're thinking about it, you breathing in, you breathing out. And we know how critical in the time we live in that breathing and breathing out is important. Uh, have been shortness of breath. If you've ever had experienced that, that's not good. So we know that we wouldn't take one breath and think that it would take us through the day. 
or through a week, then we know we must persevere in prayer just like we breathe. Um, I heard a gentleman said, you, you, wanna, you need to pray just like you need to breathe. He said, uh, I believe, let me think how he says it. He says, uh, you want it just as bad as you want to breathe. You must pray like that. That is the type of mentality, the mindset of, of uh, pray without ceasing is as you go about your day, because you're going to find yourself. Satan is going to, as we go through this uh focus on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he's going to find ways to challenge you and to keep you from moving forward because he knows that his yoke and he knows that the power he has in the lives of those around us and the things that easily beset us are going to be broken. And he sees that there are men and women, individuals who are preparing for a soon coming Christ. And not only are they preparing, but they're desiring to minister and reach out to others and pray for them that they be ready as well. Church, Christ is coming soon. And it is my prayer that we are ready and that those that we come into contact, we are sharing the good news of, of, of Christ soon coming and the three angels' message that they may understand that judgment is at hand and that they must prepare for that judgment, and that there is a way out, um, there is a way of safety. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we continue to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We continue to pray for an opening and up of our understanding through our daily devotions. Lord, we pray for revival and reformation in our lives first and also in the church, because each one of us make up the church. So Lord, I pray that there'll be a change. First, there's a desire to change. You strengthen us to make that change. And then in turn, as we change, we will give a testimony to others. Lord, I pray and lift up those on the prayer list. Each one of us have a prayer list. And as our prayer list grows, Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless our minds to remember each individual and that we perseveringly pray for them as we intercede on their behalf. Just like how Abraham interceded on the behalf of Lot. He prayed for the city, yet the city did not, was not in obedience. We know Lot and his family, the two daughters were obedient. Lord, we pray on behalf of those and we pray that they will come into obedience father we pray that we will persevere in prayer and intercede on the behalf of others and that this will become part of our prayer and that we will continue even when we're weary even when we're tired lord you will strengthen us and that we will um, take that moment that time throughout the day as individuals' names and faces come across our memory, we will pray on their behalf. We just thank you for this in the holy and precious name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, uh, Brother Walter Lowe, for blessing us and allowing the Lord to use you this week and for uh, blessing us again today on the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Um, just thank you, Lord. We will uh, meet again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. We'll start forth.